Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Triple Option. I am here with my friends, my compadres, my cohorts, Kevin Little, Coach A.B. Adam Brown. Boys, how you doing? Happy Father's Day. Adam, you have children. Kevin, you have a dog. Uh, both <laughs> proud fathers in their own right. How you guys doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I, no complaints. No complaints about about the day. <laughs> Good stuff. Just as any true dad, never complain. Nobody cares anyway. Listen, boys, we got a classic edition of the Triple Ops. It's going to be film heavy, no guests. We've been using guests as a crutch. Now we rip them away and we walk on our own two feet, our own wings, like a little baby bird leaving the nest. It's going to be film heavy. We're going to talk about some of the great work that Kevin's been doing on the X's and Knowles YouTube page. Talk about the camps, uh, specifically the big man camp, some of the coverage that Tom Nation's had it. I, the 9 million camps that have happened since our last episode, there's literally something new every single day. We're going to talk about a new boom, commitment, Omar Graham, the linebacker. Going to going to talk about him a little bit. Then we're going to debut a new segment, untitled for now, but I think you guys will like it. Stick to the end for that one. Should be something classic. Teaser. So, before we get to some of the work that Kevin's done, I want to say that I'm disappointed with you all. Because I know a lot of you guys watch – but you're not subscribed to the X's and Knowles YouTube channel. And I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know if it's a personality defect. I don't know if you have a lack of moral fiber. But if you're watching this video and not subscribed to the X's and Knowles YouTube page, click subscribe now. Okay, I gave you the time. You're subscribed. I love you again. I'm sorry I had to be harsh on you. But in addition to all these sweet, kick-ass triple option videos, Kevin is just dropping gems every single day. Adam's dropping gems. It's just, it's a South African diamond mine. It's just <laughs> bling bang everywhere. Just gems everywhere. So we're going to talk about the one that Kevin did this bling week. Bang. Kevin, you did a fantastic video about um, the basics of coverage, coverage concepts, if you will. So this is good because there's a lot of people that hear things like cover two and press man and online, they pretend that they know what they mean and they have no idea what they mean. So thank you for doing a humanitarian effort and actually teaching people. <laughs> Explain this new video um, in your own words as the creative genius behind it. Yeah, so if you haven't checked it out, I think you're kind of missing out um, unless you unless you kind of know the coverage basics. But the reason I made this video, so this is kind of the video. Um, so if you have if you don't watch any of my solo videos I make, um, you're a scumbag. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a good one to start with. Uh, so it kind of follows the format of defining something on a whiteboard and then showing the film of it. Um, so all sorts of concepts that y you might not be familiar with. Um, and then so it kind of goes back and forth. It even kind of talks about a little bit of cover seven principles, which which is kind of I've never even heard of that one. I don't <laughs> even that one. I don't know that one. You could have made that up and I would believe you. Yeah, which is a little bit beyond basics, but it kind of touches on what it is and, and why it's important. Um, and then at the end, you get like a little quiz section and I, and I give you answers. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was uh, it was a it was a long one. One of my longer solo videos I've made, but um, definitely worth checking out because what's coming up next week is we're talking about what Adam Fuller, or I don't know if it's going to come out next week, but sometime soon. Um, Give him time. Give him time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're going we're gonna to use those concepts that I defined in that video, and we're going to kind of use that to discuss Adam Fuller's, because I, I figured if if I just jumped straight into Adam Fuller coverage, I'd probably lose a lot of people uh, right off the bat. So um, <laughs> you'd probably also get a lot, terms. Of, <laughs> a lot of wild commentary. So like any good EDM house banger, Kevin's work builds upon itself like a, yes. a, a an immaculate pyramid. Mm -hmm. So you go through everything that video, dude. It was awesome. We did man basics, coverage basics, zone basics, different types of zone. I'm interested. So what? I, I don't want to. I don't want you to give too much away, but I also want you to do a teaser for all my new friends that have now subscribed to your YouTube page. And you're going to see it quickly. And if you haven't, do it now. Um, what's Adam Fuller's like? What? How would you describe his preferred coverage style? What's his philosophy? So Adam Fuller, what I've noticed about him is he loves man coverage. So okay, um, uh, I I, I kind of I really like the way he runs his defense. I think he he relies a lot on on man free, which is uh, something. So if the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, uh, Clark 
Clark Lee, I think is how his name is pronounced. Um, yeah, he, he does very similar things, and he just got a head coaching gig somewhere. I, I forget. But, um, yeah, it's the kind of defense where if you can get the kids that Florida State can get in the secondary, you can really succeed um, and really shut some teams down. So, um, he also runs a couple of cover seven things. So, if you haven't checked out the video, I kind of talk about what cover seven is. Um, and so, that's interesting and something that um, – the average fan probably wouldn't be able to pick up just watching because uh, even I've had to do a fair amount of reading just to kind of figure out what this is, what why he's doing it, what it is. You know, like this is like some saving right. principles that have been really invented in the past five, ten years. And so when I was playing football in 2012, these these weren't really common common topics of discussion. So, um, and Adam, you thing. hate. Adam, you hate forward passes. You hate anything related <laughs> to the air in general. You're basically a, a human warthog. You're always staying low to the ground and rooting and always running the ball. What did you What did you think of What did you oh, think of Kevin's man. video? What did you? I get thought it was from great. It, it was. Uh, I mean, I've that's high lot. praise. I've watched a lot of stuff on coverages. Obviously, uh, having call plays and, and stuff in the past in my football coaching career. And um, yeah, I mean, I thought it really did a great job of breaking things down in layman's terms that you know the everyday fan that maybe doesn't spend a lot of time trying to understand the game of football could jump into that and come away with a a base of knowledge um that they probably aren't going to get just by watching a game or whatever and, it, and it's just going to help you understand okay when this guy's lined up here i'm at least going to rec- or i'm at least going to understand one or two things that could potentially be happening in the secondary of course you can't ever see the secondary when you watch <laughs> a football game but um yeah, I mean, I thought it was really good. I thought it was it was great. <laughs> it's certainly a video that I'll kind of keep, you know, there as I'm watching games just to remind me because some of this cover seven stuff is definitely um, groundbreaking. Oh, it, it gets dense. <laughs> it is groundbreaking and it is very, very thorough and deep. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it'd be good to just have kind of a little cheat, little cheat code there in the background that I can refer to. Well, good. So check out the video. Check out Kevin's. Um sequel i guess for lack of a better term where it's going to focus on just what florida state's defensive coordinator adam fuller does quick question before we move on to all the camp talk specifically big man camp adam i will throw you the bone because we talked about passing so much on that one where do you think fuller's defense kind of failed last year kevin just it it, was it scheme personnel lack of time to coordinate because you believe in the scheme just what what do you think happened last year i think we just didn't like I said before, he, he does focus a lot on man coverage. He focuses, he puts that. So, um, if we're looking at a formation, Oh, I just jumped out of it. Um, if we're looking at a formation, when I say three by one, that means three receivers on one side, uh, one receiver on the other side. When we're talking like a three by one formation, um, he's going to put that backside corner. So, this guy here, he's going to put mm-hmm. him on an island a lot, and we just didn't have an answer. We didn't have anybody that we could put there that was consistently going to be reliable in that position. Um, and they, they kind of need help from the will, and we didn't have – so, like, if you think of any <laughs> under-breaking routes, there was no one here that could really help out um, on those past concepts. So we were getting really just – I think it was just a combination of multiple things coming together um, and – you know, we just didn't have an answer on the boundary side of the field. No help on the inside. Picture Bailey Hockman and NC State. Think about that fun game. Bailey Hockman, who's now the starting quarterback of the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders or something. Yeah, that, that was great. So check out that video. Now, there's a lot of new things happening at Tomahawk Nation, our our, our mama website, our, our partner website, the people who present us to you. Look at that little, the little circle logo. That's them. Um, Got some boots on the ground at all these Mike Norvell camps, Adam. We have a new guy that started, I think, last week, Tommy Meyer. He is on the ground next to all the knees, the Blosteens, the War Chant crew, taking video, getting you right deep in in the action. And there's stuff popping up on Tomahawk Nation every single day uh, that's right there, video where you can see of a lot of these kids whose names you'd recognize from the recruiting world but then you can actually see with your own eyes, your own peepers, why you should actually care about the athletic prowess of a 17 year old, which to (laughs) me is great by it. Cause I, I I wasn't the biggest fan of it before. 
but I am now. So he he specifically did. Uh, Mike Norvell had a big man camp, and dude, uh-huh. they have camps every single day, uh, man. Like it's so, so it's camps. so much different than what June's used to be. Like it's it, it it's really not just pushing the chips all in to like one big recruiting event. It's something every single day they're having guys coming in. So they had a big man camp, and uh, Adam, I'll let you take it from there, man. What did you see? Uh, I know there's an article about it on Tom Ock Nation, but, like, what stood out? Who stood out? Yada, yada. The floor is yours. Talk about the Hogs. Yeah, I mean, Tommy's been doing a great job. They, so they've had two, two big man camps, um, one this past Wednesday and then one, I believe, the Wednesday before that. Uh, and the one before that, we, we've got – I forgot one. <laughs> there's Dude, so many, I forgot one. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. They, I think they've had like seven or eight camps already. They had the mega camp, the elite camp, the two big man camps, the quarterback camp, the kicking camp, the seven on sevens. I mean, it's just – it's insane what they've tried to do – or not what they've tried to do, what they have done, and they've executed it, uh, I mean, by all accounts uh, – you know, listening to the 24-7 crew, uh, Josh Newberg, who we've had on here, and Brendan Sinone, who we've also had on here. Our God homies, bless. our peeps. Um, yeah, I mean, listening to them, listening to Tommy, listening to other folks that, who have been at these uh, in different events, uh, they've just absolutely crushed it. Uh, so, first off, hats off to Mike Norvell, hats off to Ryan Bartow, his, his whole crew. Um, you know, seeing us out there, our people, Tommy out there, recognizing the work that we're starting to do as a site, but... Uh, and respecting that but also just you know tip of the cap to those guys and what they've been able to do so far but yeah so we we had a lot of uh we had an article up recently from the big man camp from last week um i mean they had guys from all over the place all over the state of florida they've got juco guys coming in it's just it's simply insane a kid from canada i think uh, was in like it's just nuts uh, the guys they've had in so and good Canada too, Western Canada, not scumbag French Canada. Who this uh, podcast is not. We do not um, French Canadian people. We do not support you. And this is a stance that I personally have. That I'm a. You're not a Montreal Canadiens fan. Oh no, I'm not a fan of the Le Canadien de Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're garbage people. And this is a view that I have that I'm espousing to the entire podcast now. Wow. We, we, wow. we don't. We don't We're like. We don't like fake East Canada, Newfoundland. You're cool. But uh, we we don't we don't uh, we don't mess with Quebec on X's and Knolls. Yeah, so, I come mean, come at me. Oh, come at him, bro. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just it's uh, it's to even begin to try to like talk about this is insane because there's just been so many kids. So a young man that was on campus, uh, he's a composite three star. His name's Isaiah Hastings. That's the Canadian. That's the Canadian. Yep. So he's a he's a D tackle, maybe a D end, uh, kind of a kid who's grown into his body. Obviously, a little bit raw. Uh, he, he showed up this past Wednesday and had a really good camp. There were a couple kids out of, I believe. Belglade, the Belglade tackles. The Belglade offensive tackles, yeah. Yep. Keon Kindred, and I'm trying to find the other young man's name. Ja, I'm going to butcher this. Do ja, it. Jacavian Nonar. Sick name. Yeah, Both. Absolutely. I like the first name. It's alliterative, and the second one is hard to pronounce. So to me, I think they're a package deal because I like both. Both, names. both three stars uh, in the composite. I, I really like the Kendrick kid. Um, he's really aggressive. I I had some analysis in the article uh, that Tommy had put up. You can go back on Tomahawk Nation to find that. Um, I mean, he just heavy-handed. He absolutely will punch you in the mouth and get you off your spot as a as a pass rusher. Uh, and he being the offensive tackle. He looked a little short, which is probably one of the reasons why maybe he doesn't have a ton of offers. He's got some Dell State, you know, those types of shout out Hornets. That's, that's Delaware State, by the way. That, that, that is Delaware State. State right? Yeah, you, get, you stop acting like people are in the Del know State. about Dell dropping. <laughs> dropping <laughs> Come on, man. That's dropping cool Hornets. nicknames for the Delaware State they're like, Hornets. They're like 20, 20 minutes out. Adam way. lives in Delaware, so yes, he I thinks do. everywhere is Delaware. It's not all Delaware. We just gave him your, your home address, AB. Oh, yeah, because it's just the walk into. <laughs> Walk into Delaware, you see the bald head, and you're like, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Yeah, so Kit, Kendrick's a kid that I think is probably a good plan C type. Um, you know, okay. down, if you were to miss on some of your top guys, your Julian Armellas, your Elijah Pritchett, who, Elijah Pritchett, who came the previous big man camp, came in and worked out. and the, He basically worked out one-on-one with Mike Norvell for an hour and a half, which is incredible to me because we talked about it with Josh. Um you know how important it is when guys come to camp that they work out and the fact that he spent an hour working out personally with mike norvell is just 
it's mind blowing, and it shows the interest that 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 a five star offensive tackle has, in, or I guess he's a high four, has in your program, and. You haven't had those kids interested in your program in a while. No, no, at all. So question before we move on, because there is a lot of recruiting action going on. I mean, we got, we got somebody, we're going to talk about a commitment here in a little bit. There's a, there's a subsection of the fan base that right now isn't impressed with recruiting unless it's dealing with the trenches, be that both offensive and defensive. Uh Uh-huh. What, what's your opinion right now, Adam, of the of the of the trench recruiting? Like, are are you happy with where it's at? Like, who are who are some names that are beginning some traction with? Maybe some names that are falling off that may surprise people. Just to get a quick synopsis of the big. Yeah, game. I mean, I think you got to be pretty happy with where they are as a board. I mean, look, would you like to have all these guys committed? Absolutely, but is that realistic? No, not at no. all. No, and June is a this June is a historically slow month for commitments. I think that like people like Bud Elliott uh, and Ingram, shout out to my no cast boys. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of stories it's from like the national media how this June has been like a third or a fourth of the normal uh-huh. commitments of a previous June, which makes sense. The dead period's over. Kids want to meet these other coaching staffs for yeah. the first time. Oh, yeah. So you saw a kid like Omar Graham, a guy that, you know, we're going to talk about here in a second, a linebacker that has been considered like a Florida state guy for months and months and months. Those crystal balls are dusty at this point, but he had never met Mike Norvell and the staff. He had never met Manny Diaz and his band of miscreants down in South Florida, right. whoever those idiots are. So he met them both and he chose to go to Florida state because apparently he's got a good head on his shoulder. So good for him. But there's a lot of kids that are, Maybe in like if, if if this recruiting cycle was back in 2018, 2019, they would have committed already. Yeah, I but think they're, so. But they're being a little bit more. I don't even want to say hesitant. They're just they're just doing any sort of due diligence because they haven't met any of these guys before. Yeah, I mean, so you've had Julian Armella, the uh, four star, five star on rivals on campus offensive tackle. You've had Elijah Pritchett. I mean, those are probably your two top offensive tackle prospects. They've both been on campus already in June. That's pretty massive, in my opinion. Um, Pritchett twice. Uh, you're expecting Emory Jones, a uh, offensive line prospect out of Louisiana on campus. I think in the coming week he's supposed to take an official visit. You've had Kaniah Charlton, who's a three-star offensive guard, who you probably feel like you're going to have in this class. Uh, he's been on campus. He's got an official visit. He's probably going to be, he's probably going to be committed and in, in this class in the next month or so. Um, You've got Quayshawn Sapp, who's got an official visit coming up, who was just on campus, I think, a week ago or two weeks ago. Another kid you you kind of feel good. You're competing against Florida with him. You, you, you feel pretty good there. Uh, Daltry Richardson just came off a uh, official visit. He's looking around. It's, it's probably Florida State and the Canes for, for him. See where they, I mean, so – you, you know, I'm listening to a lot of names, and we haven't had a lot of names to listen in the past few years. So it's great that you've got a expansive board, and you're really kind of in the thick of for, for a lot of these guys. You've got a Luba already in the class who we really like, who we think yeah. can play off as a tackle. We have a video on him, by the way, if you haven't checked Check that it out. Check it out <laughs> if you haven't gone to X. You would have if you subscribed. Ooh, subscribe. Yeah, I told Damn. you. Let's see. You're missing out on things all the time. And it's just oh, it's, you. Oh, it's just incredible. The D tackle board's a little a little iffy. I think you've got uh, it's Bishop Thomas. It's thin. Yeah. It's very yeah. thin. Yeah, you've got Bishop Thomas uh, out of South Florida. Was a Louisiana kid. I think he's out of South Florida. I don't know the Florida places, but he's from he's out of Florida. But he was from originally from Louisiana. Uh, you got Daniel Lyons, who's out of Florida. Um, is, he, is Lyons a tackle? Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's going to be a tackle. Bishop Thomas, I, I hear he's a little little small, a little shorter than. Um, what maybe he's listed as, which is a concern, but uh, I, I think he's probably a take for him. The DN board looks great. I mean, you just have Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, on campus, who yeah, is an absolute big. must. I mean, he's a superstar defensive end prospect. Nigel Kelly, the LSU guys think he's probably going to be back in Florida State's class, which we'll see. I mean, there's a young man who really blew up this offseason. So it's I mean it's hilarious because I'm saying all these names and some people are like oh who's that but it, go look them up I mean you can Google these guys their 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 profiles will come up their huddle films will come up they they are really good players and we haven't been able to say that the last couple of years about Florida State recruiting it's 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 really refreshing it's really nice to see the efforts that have been made they've obviously got a 
win a couple games this year and show some improvement. We all kind of feel like they're going to be able to do that. But recruiting is on the uptick for Florida State. And everybody seems to be recognizing it. What it sounds like to me is almost they're finding a range of, hey, if we win, if we win eight or nine games, these are the, we already got these kids kind of sitting around for us. But if, if this season doesn't go, if we don't get the, the fumbles we need or, or the turns we need to, to pull that and we end up winning five or six, maybe we also have those kids on the line. Yeah, they seem to have that really high tier where if they win eight or nine games, they know they can push that six, maybe seven spot in recruiting, maybe five if, if you're lucky. I don't know. It depends on who you ask. But uh, and I think if they're in that six win range, you're looking at 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that ballpark. I know I've heard Bud mention – uh, multiple times that he he feels like they can push for a top 10 class a lot of it's going to depend on the numbers that the uh, other schools are taking there's some questions about the how many how many high school prospects other schools are going to be able to take because of the the transfer portal the super seniors and all that stuff so we'll, we'll kind of see where that goes but um yeah i mean it, it, i think you're right they they seem to have a good tier of if we do really well and we overachieve we we're going to get these guys if not, we still feel really good about our floor prospects uh, in that second tier. So go to Tomahawk Nation, see all these kids that we're talking about, look them up, go to all the recruiting threads, go to all the videos, and you see these kids' names at camp. Because when they do commit, then they get the triple option treat, like a nice car that we detail <laughs> before we send it to you. And it, like That's what we're going to do. So we've got somebody to detail right now, and that is three-star linebacker commitment as of today, Omar Graham from South Florida. Boys, I let Adam pontificate a little bit. So, Kevin, I'll give you first crack. What do you think about Omar Graham? You happy about the commitment? Seems like it was an FSU-Miami battle. The good guys have won again. Good for us. Um, uh, a good thing should only happen to us and not to them. The world is right, spinning on its axis. Kevin, what do you think about Omar Graham? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, here's this film. We can pull him up while we while, while we talk about him. You just you gotta like the quickness, Ooh. the athleticism. He's a hard hitter, um, and and someone that in this modern day and age, you, you want to be able to find someone that has this speed, this change of pay, this change of uh, pace that he's got here, um, who can potentially be an asset not only making Oof. these huge hits like this, but also in coverage. Very instinctive, like I and once again. I look for I'm I'm a common I'm a garden variety idiot, but I like <laughs> linebackers the trigger and uh, bang bang I like what I see so far Adam. Yeah, so Trey, when you say trigger, what, what what's that mean? I mean like when <laughs> when he sees the play coming to him when he recognizes what's happening, it's immediate come forward like shot out of a gun in my opinion. I like the, that. the change of direction and it's you can always say like boom recognizes right now goes attacks that one's a little bit not the best example of what i'm talking about but it, like when he knows what's happening there's no hesitation like we've seen our linebackers have become kind of blocking sponges for offensive linemen this guy is good at shedding blocks and he closes on the ball carrier or the guy he's defending very quickly he, see, he seems to know where to be at all times which is nice um intelligence played, intelligence yeah, and i've heard he's a pretty pretty sharp kid um he, he leverages the ball really well, meaning he stays on the back hip of the of the uh, ball carrier. A lot of times, it plays inside out. He did a there was a couple of plays earlier where he did a nice job of squeezing the edge, setting the edge, and just kind of squeezing things and forcing it to uh, either bounce to an unblocked man or or turn back inside. We see him here playing with good angles. Yep. Um, you know, he seems like he's aggressive enough, which is certainly something you don't want to take for granted. Um, so you, you see him playing a lot of defensive end and the occasional Mike linebacker in this. Uh, where do you think he fits at Florida State, AB? I think he I think he's a will. He looks like a free runner, uh, going to be protected by that three tech in, in Adam Fuller's defense. Right. So what's keeping a kid like this from being a, a four star? I don't think he's I don't think he's as fluid in the hips. He looks a little tight. Yeah, he he looks like he's got. Uh, I agree. The straightforward speed. I mean, you can see on this kick kick recovery, but. The straightforward speed speed seems to be there, but yeah, it looks a little tight. I, and you don't see him in coverage a lot, so we're not seeing him drop deep. So you don't really know what he's able to do there. But right there, a more fluid kid can kind of st stop on a dime, turn around, and get back. Uh, you see how he's got to kind of turn in a circle, just show some tightness. 
Okay. Yeah, we so a little probably... bit of extra extra movements. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, saying. he's yeah. he's gonna take an extra step to do things that a more fluid kid, a Daniel Martin, can do <laughs> in fewer steps. Who's we're we're the Daniel Martin podcast now. We are we're this anti kid, French well, Canada and pro Daniel Martin. This is a really good take though. I mean, for them, this is a he 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 kind of looks like Emmett Rice to me a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I can see right it. here. Here he's dropping. You look just you kind of look how tight he is, kind of just playing in space. Right, he's he definitely seems like he would test well at the forty, but maybe not the shuttle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But okay. so, good player so, though. So good maybe player. a kid that kind of overcompensates for that lack of kind of lateral agility by game knowledge and then aggression, maybe. And there's a lot to say for that. I mean, maybe. if he knows where he's <laughs> if he if he knows where he's supposed to be, um, if he kind of understands the concepts and knows where he's supposed to be and understands what the offense is trying to do, you can make up for some of that tightness just by through sheer intelligence. So it's not to say that he can't be really good at pass coverage just because he's tight. I mean, he can make up for that. And and the thing about Fuller's system is he's being he, he'll potentially play Will linebacker. So that means, like, if we look at this, we got trips to the top of the field, uh, single receiver down here, he would be on the boundary side, which yep. gives him – you kind of give him less space to patrol potentially in yeah. pass coverage yep. there. Yep, he's gonna buzz that. He's gonna buzz that flat out there and play underneath the the number one receiver. He's not gonna be asked to do a ton down the field. Um, might have to pick up a running back, but again, he's gonna be picking up a running back, kind of running straight line. You might get some angle routes and that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, he, there's a good shot of him picking up a back out, out of the backfield. He, re, he redirected nice, which you like to see. He got his hands on the back. That's uh, that's not something you always see out of high school kids. And I, I like there. that he's dynamic enough to be able to play some defensive end, some linebacker. Yeah. It shows that setting you know, the edge there again. It's not easy to pick that up, Mike. Mike and Will linebacker, which is what he's playing a, a fair amount of, is can be kind of complicated with gap assignments run, and run that coverage. one. Run that one back. Run that one back. That was kind of him in the Will position. Like yeah, what it might look like. They get just getting a little simple inside zone play. He sees a, he sees a hole and he attacks it. He triggered, as Trey might say. <laughs> yeah, solid pickup. Nice kind yeah. of kid to have. Looks good. So we got and now we got one on the board for our eyewear, our eyewear model, Captain Specs, <laughs> Coach Lens Crafters. Chris Marv has one on the board. It's an interesting it's an interesting time period for Mr. Marv. There are some questions uh, about his recruiting ability and this will be perfect. This will be a perfect time for him to either exacerbate those concerns or just kind of stamp them out, right? Like either make them bigger or make them nothing because they're in right now with a lot of linebackers, Daniel Martins, EJ Lightsey's, Wesley Bassant. Um there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that Florida State is really in a good position for, but can Marv close? Some think yes, some think no. He he closed here on this one, but is Be Omar Graham one of the is Omar Graham the ceiling of your linebacker class for 2022 or is he the floor? That's where I think a lot of this is going to come in. However, he did a really good job with Omar, so no. Congrats, my boy. Beat Congrats Miami my for boy. Him. Beat out Miami Beat, for, for him. Beat Miami for him. Shine up those specs real nice and uh, put on one of those awkward vest jackets you like to wear, my man, and <laughs> oh, just yeah. stunt, we, stunt say, on the people. Stunt somebody, on the people. Somebody's got to pick up his wardrobe. I, well, I can't <laughs> say anything because I have embraced dad life with uh, <laughs> reckless abandon. I wear calf the, socks and I have dope monarchs. But Are uh, you rocking the Mackenzie Milton? dad bod did you see did you see that on instagram you had the dad, dad bod video or whatever i've been normalizing dad bods since i was 15 years old so i'm glad <laughs> as always i'm ahead of the curve so mckenzie oh, welcome to the club of uh a little extra junk in the trunk a little bit just a little bit more to love and if mckenzie's uh family's watching hello hey uh, uh ohana aloha uh yes uh you can eat all the poke you want and still look great with the dad bod. And now McKenzie knows it, and that's just another mark of his good decision-making. So, as always, <laughs> the uh, transfer that keeps on giving. Do we have any more that we'd like to get to before we're – we're going to introduce a new segment. We're going to see if it – I'm excited about it. Uh, we'll see if it I think we're ready. We'll yeah, I think we're good. Let's get into this. Or flies gloriously. Okay. So, I'm going to say this. The 
The concept of this segment is obviously we know that Adam and Kevin are the brains of the operation, and I'm the face. I'm a face guy. Uh, my head is a vacuous vessel, nothing in there, and I'm just a pretty, I'm just a pretty face. I got nothing going on upstairs. So when it comes to like these like play breakdowns, I pretend to know what I'm doing, but I really don't because I'm a salesman in real life and I could BS my way through anything. So this I'm not going to be able to. Kevin and Adam have picked a play that I don't know about. They're going to force me to break it down by myself at the beginning, and they're, they're going to correct everything that I've done wrong. Now, this will have foul language. I'm just, I want to do anything. If you're listening to this in audio, oh, and you have it will children, have foul language. I am I'm, I'm going to, I've been, I've been a little, I've been good lately. I've been, I, I've been really stressing the limits of my non cuss word vocabulary. If anybody listened to my podcast knows this, no more. The governor's off. I'm going to say whatever I want. So beep, 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 boo, beep, boo, beep, boo. bad language alert because I intentionally wanted Adam to pick something from a game that might enrage me. So I'm going to let it fly. So this segment doesn't have a title yet. Uh, foul language alert starts now. Three, two, one. Uh, I'm going to lovingly call it correct a dumbass. Uh, if you guys have a better name for this title, go ahead and say it. It doesn't have a catchy pun, but guys, let's go once again. If you're listening with the kids, skip forward about 10 minutes. I'm going to let this bitch fly. Let's go. <laughs> Motherfucker, you would. You would, the Virginia Tech game. <laughs> I knew Can it was going to be I knew it was going to be some fucking garbage from a Willie Taggart game. And I, I you uh, can I tell you, <laughs> can I tell you that this was the moment that I knew they had to fire his ass? Oh, I mean, shut up. Game really? game one. In, yeah, uh, nine one, minutes in. OK, one thousand, Thomas. No, I think what, six minutes in. No, 1,000 percent. I said it in the slack the night we were watching this game. Trey, maybe you were in there. Maybe you weren't. I don't recall. No, I, and I said <laughs> they had to fire him then. OK, well, let me see what we got here. We got a bunch of jabronis in black. We're only down by seven, six minutes in. Uh, we got the, a guy. We got a guy in motion. The, that's the best look of Florida State jerseys, by the way. Oh, oh you're a black on black guy, not oh, a traditional. All here. right. Send at hate tweets to uh, Coach <laughs> A.B. So we've got a little. Uh, what is this? This is a this is not an orbit motion. This is a jet motion. Jet I motion. Believe. There you go. Yeah, motherfucker. Jet <laughs> motion. Got an H back. Oh, look at Got you. Got some black unis. Who knows what could happen? Uh, da, 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 da. I do. I am noticing that this is pre Kendall Bryles, but the wide receivers do seem to have some nice wide splits. Uh, this guy's um, inside the numbers, man. This is this yeah, can't be Bryles. Okay, that. never mind. I, you're not supposed to tell me I'm dumb till later. Oh. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, mean, I meant to say this is inside of the numbers. Of course, this is Kendall Bryles. Okay, well let's see what we got here, and I can just hit, let my PTSD fly from this horrible night. Oh man. Okay. Oh fuck. Oh Jesus God. Oh Jesus God. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so stupid. Oh, this is okay. Okay. So okay. Uh, there's that oh, asshole. Bud. We made him look so much smarter than he really is. So jet motion, little toss. Um, we didn't block anybody. Nobody. Zero blocking. The effort that we put into blocking is the effort that I put into uh, pre-show for these shows. Uh, I just let it fly, and that's what we did. Why are there 900 million white people <laughs> and the one poor numero ocho? I don't know. You tell us. How You're the they, one breaking it down. How did they? Okay. What the? F okay. Go back again. I don't understand why. Okay. Slow. Stop. Stop now. Okay. I'll be your. I'll be your. The pin. guys. The guys. The right. The look at the the right tackle and the right guard. I have a feeling they were supposed to down block and maybe scrape to the next level. Focus on him. No, no, no. The other guy. That guy is at least making contact. That seems to be poor positioning with your hips turned with a, hey, why the, why the fuck you going there, bro? Uh, His so that's not good. Up. 44, um, 6, 3, <laughs> 6, 3, and 8. Okay. So I don't know why 6 is blocking the – why both 6 and 3 are going to the outside guy, leaving this guy – just if he had a vagina, Wait, it would be with this guy. This no, no, that guy. His vagina would be wet from desire because he's sexually aroused at how much of a free look he's going to get at eight. Now go forward because forty-four <laughs> and the guy next to him are free. 
do we block any of the guys that oh and this guy this guy in the interior number 11 um <laughs> look at 72 who's 72 is that mike arnold uh yeah Fucker, I knew it was fucking Mike Arnold. Look, uh, look at the, look, standing perpendicular uh, to, the, to the play. Oh um, shit! So three, and that's Cam Akers. God bless his soul. Tries is six. Um, Trey McKitty is Trey McKitty just bailing out on the three guys directly so he could try to get a kill shot on seventeen and just letting Nyquan Murray die. <laughs> All right, play. I mean, wouldn't you fire him right now? Seriously, come on. Oh, man, that is what happened. Wait, how did Akers oh. block end up? I probably, I mean, I don't even. Oh. Uh, he didn't stick with it. It was just. He it, gave it's him a the, shoulder. It's the classic, let me try to hit him hard, but not actually have technique on the block. That's one of the most disgusting plays. That's the Three Mile Island. That's the, uh, that's the first in Fukushima. And oh, of course, it was first and fifteen because we had a pre-snap penalty before this. <laughs> I didn't notice that the down and distance. So this is the uh, the first and fifteen Fukushima. This is the nuclear meltdown, and uh, much like the Fukushima plant, there has been uh, a radiation just irradiating from this play probably since Florida State's gone on. Um, what a toxic environment! Please stop making me watch it. All I'm right. going to make you watch more. All right. That's what do you, what my, do you see, A.B.? That's my breakdown. What did I get wrong, and uh, what I, do you smart people see? All right. So I don't know if there's a read for the quarterback. I'm guessing that they're probably – I don't know. It, it, if, there's ah. a read, if there's a read for the quarterback, he should have kept the football. That's the first thing I said. Right. Yeah. If he's reading anything, he's reading there. probably the Stevens Vend, right? Yeah, which tells you – keep the football and please he's crashing so, down yeah i mean because they've got they've got five oh, on sorry four. He's watching they've got they've got five on four on the backside um unless nyquan banged his girlfriend he should keep the ball oh my god look at the numbers <laughs> <laughs> but even even there even there at that point if you stop it right there if six takes the the inside linebacker and three takes the kid on the edge You've got it. You've got it. At, 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 you've got it. A loss of two. <laughs> you've got it worse. A loss of two. Instead, you get a loss of eight because Nooney takes the ball, runs backwards. And, but I look at his angle already. Yeah, it's very got lackadaisical, awful. right? Path, like the, the path to the football is god awful. Okay. It's almost like they practice this play in a parking lot before the game. <laughs> he is, yeah, yeah. That is. <laughs> you want to go that way, not this way. What I like pre-snap is, um, Virginia Tech had so little respect that this play was literally anything other than a jet, than jet that they cheated super hard on it. Is is that like a hallmark of? Uh, is I that think like we a lost AB by the way? That's okay. You and I can talk. He'll come back. Uh, is that was that a hallmark of the Willie Taggart offenses? Like just not a lot of reads. It was a lot of straight like it was a lot of straight gives. Right. Or the, the trickiest thing that I remember seeing is they would throw the bubble and then one time they'd fake the bubble and go over top to the guy in the slot. Like there wasn't a lot of deception. Is that correct or am I wrong? Yeah. So he's he's going to call it more often than not. You get this over and over and over and over again. You can already see that they don't respect this throw at all, right? So you got kind of man coverage looking down here. This uh, safety isn't helping whatsoever. He's and not even looking, dude. He regardless care. of <laughs> how bad this angle is, of this TV angle, there is nobody back here, right? You got 11 people here. Like, what did you, what did you think of? So that's the design. What did you think of the execution of the blocking? Was it as bad? Did I did I actually hold back and it was worse than I thought? So the offensive line, yeah, you'd like to see them climb up and get this guy, right? But this guy and this guy are unblocked by the offensive line on purpose. So that that's oh. like a that's a real thing. You hope that they can climb up to this guy. <laughs> that's a real thing. <laughs> but you're you're almost accounting that 
So this you're, defensive defensive end, you're saying he's not going to be able to get to this guy running at full speed already, right? Like I'm going to win that race <laughs> to the edge. You'd hope so. You hope that Trey McKitty, your like star tight end, makes a block. You hope that you can at least chip this guy. And then you win a race to the outside against this safety. Unfortunately, the safety was already cheated up within f- what? This is a safety. They're <laughs> yeah, he's um some what, sort he's of cover six four, yards I off think? the line. He's he's six yards off the line of scrimmage. That's it, right? Yeah, that is one, just mad disrespect two, to passing. One, game right two, there. three, four, five. Yeah, five and a half ish yards. <laughs> like this is Mike Leach's wet dream right here. Oh, uh, and he would, he would, he would just bust all over this. this bullshit bud foster defense we made him look so good and they lost to old dominion later that year oh my god man this i knew adam i'm i'm glad his power went out because he deserves it for what he deserves to sleep in a sweaty delaware house for making me watch this again well he he's he's gone now so so yeah, we're gonna it's, the the biggest question mark for me has to be one this jet angle because that's controllable and two just the complete like unawareness of who to block the un give a fuckery of Nyquan Murray running this ball <laughs> and then just is also it. quite and then just I don't feel like carrying it anymore is so perfect <laughs> just the lack of shit he <laughs> just dude not not fighting to get it back just doesn't care in the play in the game end my tenure at Florida State all right, so Adam is gone, but Kevin, so I'm going to put this on you. You have to rate my performance in this correct a dumbass segment that could be could be open for a better name. You got to rate it out of ten. First of all, you look hilarious right now because uh, I'm digging. I'm digging. I can pop in, I can pop out, and then I can make you think you're on like ketamine. <laughs> everything's been messed up because AB disappeared, but uh, I figured it's you like Two Face. Uh, look at me! No, look I, at me, Gordon! I'll give you, I'll give you an A look minus. I thought that was great. I A thought, minus. I thought A you minus. nailed the the missed blocks. That was the big one for me. Um, I did. Let me try to keep my head over on this corner. You're right. Um, the spacing was Bryles esque. You know, Taggart. <laughs> Taggart went to to Baylor and tried to learn a thing or two back in the day. Um, did not work. Did not work. Yeah. A minus. So if you guys like this segment. And you want to see more, let us know. Or we're going to do our videos from now on like this. And you have to look at my disjointed. I look like I've been cut with like one of those anime samurai swords. And my body's about to like slide off. You know what I'm talking about? Where the guy goes, <laughs> shink, and then I die. Yeah. So do that or else an anime samurai is going to come cut me in half. Uh, comment that you like all that if you liked it or you didn't like it. Subscribe to the X's and Knowles YouTube page. And once again... I think another classic video. We will be here for you. Breaking down camps. Breaking down commitments. Breaking down the worst FSU clips you've ever seen. Thank you. And we're just going to, it's a garbage heap. And if you have any suggestions that of bad things that we didn't cover that we can, let us know. Once again, for Coach AB, who lives in a very rural place in Delaware with a terrible power grid for I think a chicken gen- must have got to his <laughs> Yeah, and as somebody who lives in yeah, a chicken literally electrocuted itself on his transformer and died. Uh for Kevin and myself who are actual American citizens with upstanding power grids and we pay all of our bills. We bid you adieu. Not to you, French Canada. Only bad things for you and Miami fans, and uh, we will catch you on the other side. Thank you for enjoying the triple option. We love you guys. Yeah, see you.